Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Leah back again with another video. In today's video, as you can see from the title, we're doing a follow up video to my solo travel and why you need to add solo travel to your bucket list, to your 2022, 2023, 2024 list, why you need to have it on the list. I got a lot of questions and a lot of positive feedback that I wanted to follow up on. So if you have not caught that video, that was the kind of pre, the warm up to get you ready, why you should, what you can do and the steps that you can take to make yourself feel ready to solo travel, whether that be go to the movies by yourself, eat out by yourself, go somewhere locally first, just some steps to make yourself feel comfortable. This is some just frequently asked questions that I get. I have at least what, four solo travel videos on my channel and I get questions all the time this is going to be answering those when it comes to flights rental cars all of that good stuff so first disclaimer like I said in my last video this is coming from the perspective of someone who is a occasional solo traveler I am NOT a solo travel blogger that is not my lifestyle I still work a full-time nine-to-five job that really wouldn't put me in a position to do it as extensively as some of the amazing creators I love one girl one world I believe that's her Instagram if it's incorrect I'll, I'll list it down below on the screen right now but she is an amazing travel black travel solo traveler and sometimes she travels with people and also hey underscore Sierra she is a solo black woman traveler as well those are people who do it they go every single week somewhere new that is their lifestyle for me I'm just giving the the average girl I'd say some advice somebody who wants to do it but you also get maybe two to four weeks of PTO a year so you can't really do it all the time my next disclaimer is something I was really honing in on my first video was don't let friends unresponsiveness hold you back from going places that you want to go now I do want to put the disclaimer of I'm not saying forget your friends forget all that forget everything you do you boo I'm not saying totally that what I am saying though is sometimes it does get a little bit quiet in the group chat when you start bringing up flights hotels accommodations food dining spending money you know you might have all had a good New Year's Eve party and everybody was drinking the drinks was a flowing the libations was libating and you guys made some plans you was like yes y'all we gonna travel this year yes yes and then one person took that to me yeah we definitely are so I'm gonna get the group chat started I'm gonna talk about the hotels talk about all this stuff and when you get to the group chat sometimes it's a little it's a little mute and then on the flip side there might be times where you guys have planned hey let's go to Jamaica let's do Jamaica and then somehow it ends up being Virginia Beach all of a sudden it was Jamaica then it was like okay well maybe we can do Miami and then Miami got a little too costly and then it was like let's do Virginia Beach ain't nothing wrong with you know Virginia Beach ain't nothing wrong with the the East Coast beaches nothing wrong with that but if you had your mind set on Jamaica and you really wanted to go and you were ready for Jamaica you might have compromised on a friend trip how many of us have compromised on a friend trip not to again say we didn't want to go on the friend trip we want to be with our friends we want to be engaged but not everybody is in the same place of life whether that be financially whether that be they have children they have a family they have all this that they can't take extended Jamaica weeks time off from either family or from work people's lives are in different positions and that does not necessarily mean hey forget those people like if they go quiet in the group chat it might be that the group chat is filled with six people and somebody might not feel comfortable saying hey look I'm not I don't got the money sometimes you can feel bad when it's like well I'm not in that place and I don't want to text six people to say hey look y'all I can't I can't actually do that and so it might not be coming from a place of they're unresponding because that's just their personality or they're being difficult it might might just be hey I don't have it and I feel uncomfortable saying I don't have it and so yes in essence them doing that is slowing down the process of planning yes them doing that is slowing down the process of getting to the next step them not responding is stopping the moving forward process of planning but go reach back out to the group see where the issues may lie see whether it is those accommodations whether it is a flight where is their hang up and see if maybe that can be compromised again you can compromise on a trip say Jamaica was your ultimate place that you guys wanted to go to as a unit but for some reason hey the Jersey Shore is the only place we can really you know all as a unit 
per Ford, let's do that. But say you still want to go to Jamaica. That's when I'm saying your solo travel girl plans can come into play because you shouldn't have to compromise if that is something you really ultimately wanted to do. Again, you might've wanted to experience with other people and they might not be in the place where they can go yet. You need to be comfortable in the space of, hey, well, look, I'm going to Jamaica, period. Or you can do what my Cabo trip actually was. You can plan a solo trip. In your mind, it'd be a solo trip, but you can extend it to other people. And if they can come, they can come. But if they can't, then you always knew it was gonna be a solo trip. And I say my Cabo trip as an example, because my friend who I went with, she planned that trip. That was her trip. She had planned the dates. She had planned fly-in times, all of that. She had planned the hotel accommodation. She planned all of that and she opened it up. She opened the floor up. It happens to be my birthday at the same time and I had no plans. I joined her. But at the end of the day, whether I went or not, she was going to be in combo November 27th through the 30th or the 1st, whenever we were there for. She was going. So it didn't stop her. She wasn't held up on anybody. She wasn't waiting. She knew she, she had booked everything and had it all laid out and she just opened the invitation. For example, anybody could have came with me to Key West, but I was going to Key West those days and I was staying where I was staying and that was how it was going to be. You can insert yourself into my solo travel, but I'm not going to base it around the two. We're not doing that because that's when it gets held up. That's when the silence happens and then it doesn't eventually happen. I'm going these dates. I'm going on this airline and I'm staying here. So having a solo trip in your mind that you open up to other people is still a way so you're not the standoff friend who doesn't invite people or, oh, she Leah just solo traveling and she don't want nobody there with her and she living this life. No, it's, you can come, you can come, but I'm going, period. Quite honestly, the Cabo trip, if I was a part of the planning, I would have extended an extra day. I felt like I, we weren't there long enough. I felt like I wanted to at least probably come back Wednesday if I were part of the planning, but I wasn't part of the planning. I was joining in on somebody else's planned out already solo trip. So a question I commonly get asked about solo travel is can I make a video on affordability, budgets, all of that type of stuff. And I wanted to be clear, solo travel and budget traveling don't necessarily have to go hand in hand. So I don't think I put out or I say in my videos solo traveling on a budget or how to solo travel budget friendly or affordable or this, that, and the third. I don't think I ever really say that. So don't get it confused. There are people who could probably solo travel and stay at $2,000 a night resorts and all of that. And then there are people who can stay at hostels for $25 a day. I'd say I'm not the super luxury, but I'm also not like the $25 a day. I want to have an experience so I'm somewhere in the middle. Yes, I do try to find deals. I do try to be as frugal, McDougal when it comes to flights and all of that, but I don't want it to get misconstrued that I am a um, super, super budget. You can get it for cheap because again, unlike maybe an all the time travel vlogger or blogger who has a, you know, a budget and they are traveling 365, so they have to allocate. I am somebody who I do get a certain number of vacations days a year from my job and I don't want to go too you know cheap because the cheap comes out expensive sometimes but again I don't want to spend my glass on these experiences so I'm gonna go through flights and how I do hotels I typically for flights book them mm, I'd say last year during my solo travels I went on like three trips in succession I did a June July and September trip I booked the June and July trip in March, so a couple of months before the trip. I started booking and I know they typically say what two to three months before a trip is supposed to go is when the best optimal time and Tuesdays are the best days to book these trips that's what they say I can't remember the exact days that I book my trips but I will say flight wise I do fly out of Charlotte Douglas Charlotte Airport we do not have spirit like a lot of other airlines do we do have spirit but spirit only flies to as of right now I'm recording this it only flies to like Florida we also don't have a lot of Southwest. We don't have a lot of Southwest, which is usually a really good budget airline. We have Southwest, but it probably, I think, goes to four, three or like four. Not a lot of airports as well. We are a big hub for American. This is a hub just like I believe Chicago is a hub for American Airlines. I do a lot of times fly American when it's domestic. I do like not having layovers. I don't do layovers uh, if I can stand it. If it's here, again, US based, I don't really do layovers. My last three flights, if it gives you some kind of help to understand 
my my prices and everything. Key West, I booked it American. It was $339.29. San Francisco was $263.30. Now, before I went to LA, so you guys know I went to LA in 2021, I was actually supposed to go, or not supposed to go, but I had booked Chicago. So I was gonna go to Chicago in August. And then I just changed my mind and I decided I really wanted to go to LA. Like I was doing like Key West, so further down south, San Francisco, further out west, and then I was gonna do, you know, up Midwest with Chicago. So I was gonna be, you know, seeing different places of America that I had never seen before. And so I had Chicago, but then I really was like, where do I really wanna go though? And I really wanted LA. So I switched the Chicago flight. I don't have my exact receipt from that one just because when I booked it, I had to call them to switch it and they didn't send me confirmation. Um, so, but I believe LA was about a hundred more dollars. So my flights were three. 39 263 269 for Chicago and then probably close to the higher 300s for LA. I think that was pretty reasonable. Quite honestly, I'm going on a friend's trip in two more months, two months from now, probably one month from when you're watching this, um, to New Orleans and that flight cost about $400. So the flight to New Orleans, which is probably the closest of the locations to me of all the places I went is $400 more expensive than me going to, again, San Francisco, LA, Chicago, Key West, New Orleans, funny enough. Um, again, that might have to do with, it was cheaper back in 2021, just with, you know, not a lot of people were traveling like that. So it was, those were the time. Now we're probably getting back to regular, especially you see gas prices are going up. That indicates sometimes how airlines because airlines need fuel too. If those prices go up, then the airline prices are gonna go up, unfortunately. So I, I think I did pretty okay budget-wise with my flights. When it comes to hotels, I'm gonna be honest, this is not where I skimp and save. This is not a place or an area where I try to be super cheapy McCheap cheap. This is an area where I go with what makes me feel comfortable. You guys, if you follow my channel, you know I've stayed at a cheap hotel before. I'm no stranger to it. I had to stay at a cheap hotel for work one year and it wasn't because my work was, was cheapening out. It was because we happened to book our, our trip later um, than we should have and all the kind of local hotels got booked up for the event and all of that. The places where we took typically stay were already booked up so we booked late we got a hotel kind of on the outskirts I believe if I'm not mistaken it was a comfort suites nothing wrong with comfort suites again nothing wrong this particular one we were in Ohio this particular one I happen to get bad bugs I shared that on this channel that hotel room was just disgusting. Um, I, I should have known because the breakfast area was disgusting. The pancake mix was purple. We actually had to go to eat at Bob Evans every single day instead of eating breakfast in the hotel, which I'm happy with the Continental. Again, I'm not a bougie chick. I'm happy with the Continental. We went downstairs for the Continental. I opened the pancake mix. It came out purple. It came out purple. And so across the street, literally, we could walk to Bob Evans. We ate at Bob Evans every morning because we just couldn't. Y'all in Ohio love Bob Evans, by the way. I gotta say that. Y'all, y'all, every street corner is a Bob Evans. But nonetheless, I got bed bugs from a fairly cheap hotel. Now, again, it can happen at cheap hotels, it can happen at expensive hotels, but I'm somebody who will not cheapen out on an experience because I wanna feel comfortable. I wanna feel comfortable and I'm not gonna apologize for the comfortability I want to feel. San Francisco, I was close to Union Square if you watched that video, but I was very also close to the Tenderloin, I believe district is what it's known as. And it's it's not the best, it's not the best, but I didn't feel the type of way. Again, I said in my last video that my friend in San Francisco, after I told him where I stayed, I didn't consult with him before I told him, you know, after the fact. And he was like, yeah, no, 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 no. I got a question in my last video when I, when I shared um, that I got advice from a friend. Somebody asked me what hotel or what area would I recommend for San Francisco. Uh, the recommendation is either Union Square, close to Union Square, as close as you possibly can be, or the Marina District is really good as well because it's near a lot of stuff as well. But I stay close to Union Square because again, I was in 
four minute walking distance but san francisco is a very walkable town it's a very condensed city whereas charlotte it can be like i walk for five minutes i'm still in Ballantyne. i'm walking for five minutes i'm still in university i'm walking for five minutes i'm still in south and i'm still in these areas that city san francisco you could walk for five minutes and be in a whole completely different area it's very walkable but it's a very kind of I love it. I love the small condensedness of it, but also feels like city city, if that makes sense. That's where I would recommend to stay. And then LA, I got advice from a friend before going to LA. Um, and he was like, you know, kind of the Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, that kind of scene. Um, I loved that hotel. That was probably the favorite hotel that I ever stayed at in of my of my solo travels so again, I'm, I'm not even gonna pretend like I'm the budgety stuff for that. I'm the person who wants what I want and I don't really apologize for it. When it comes to dining in restaurants, that's why I say it is important to probably solo eat out at least a few times to feel comfortable going another place and eating out solo because that's what you're gonna do. Unless you order everything in room and you do a lot of room service or door dash to your hotel room, you're gonna have to eat out a lot. I, to choose the places that I wanna eat, that's the one thing I spent a lot of time on. And the great thing about solo travel is you do not have to accommodate other people's wishes. And that's what I love. I love that I could eat what I wanted to eat. And you guys know, if you follow my channel, I eat terribly. I eat like crap and all my friends eat great. They're amazing. Whether they're pescatarian, vegan, they're eating like impossible burgers and all this great things. And I eat like a trash bucket. That's how I eat it. I'm not ashamed of it. Um, and I don't have to feel any shame while I'm traveling. What I do is I, I typically, oh, I research food like none other. I have my list of restaurants. I might not make it all to the restaurants that I want to, but I know where I want to eat. I knew before San Francisco. I knew before LA. I didn't really do a lot of Key West, I'll be honest, just because I don't think of Key West as food heavy, but I knew I wanted to try Key Lime Pie and I Googled where like the best Key Lime Pie was in Key West. Um, and I came up to the place that had like a 50 minute to an hour wait. Like there was a waiting area, I believe it's called Blue Heaven. Um, it's the place I went in my vlog. They had a restaurant and then across the street was the waiting area for the restaurant. So it was outside tables and chairs and there was a whole section. And I was scared when I walked up because they told the people above me or before me, hey, about a 45 minutes wait, we'll call you when, when it's ready or when your table's ready. So I walked up. And they were like, all right, right this way. Come sit by the bar, come sit by the bar. And I was like, okay, so I don't have to wait at all. And I was tired that day. That was the day I went to the beach. I went, like, I was, woo. I was tired. I just wanted some water and I wanted to sit down and I wanted to enjoy some key lime pie. And that's another great thing about solo travel is sometimes the restaurants that might have a weight that might be very popular, that might be top of your I need to try list, you can eat, sit and eat by the bar. It's the same food that is served at a table or a big circle table. They can bring those same food. It's not worse food. It's not specific food. You get the full menu and you can still eat by the bar and have an incredible experience. So I like that about solo travel. Now a common question I get is to rent a car or not rent a car. I got that question a lot as well too. Um, specifically, I got a question surrounding LA. How do I feel? Should I have rented a car there? Um, you know, all my places, should I have rented a car? I'd say, if I just go through a ranking of the places that I've been, should I have rented a car? I think my overall, unless it's for work, I don't typically rent a car. Like I've rented a car for my work travels because I've just had like a lot of paperwork, a lot of things. I'm our work crate, which has all our students like banners and everything. I'll, I need a car basically for those types of things. But if I'm traveling by myself, I typically never do just because I don't know what the rationale was. But nonetheless, for Key West, I say I should have rented something. I do think Key West was a city where renting something. A lot of people had golf carts because the ride sharing is inflated there. It is so jacked up. Just think of how much it costs to normally Uber in a place, times that by three, and that's what it was. It was highly inflated. I stayed right by the airport, basically, and it still cost over 20 bucks, right by the airport. And that's another question I got was, a lot of people ask, did I fly into Key West or where did I fly from in my Key West vlog? And I was so confused because I was like, I flew into Key West. Duh, like, what, what do you mean? How did I get to Key West? But I asked one of my friends who lives in Miami and I was like, why is everybody confused that I flew into Key West? And they were like, cause some people, a lot of people fly into Miami 
Charlotte happens to have a direct to Key West, but some places don't, so they fly into Miami and they drive down to the Keys, which is a beautiful route. Driving through the Keys, I hear, is beautiful. So if you are somebody who wants to do that, I think it's incredible. So either if you fly into Miami or fly into Key West, I'd still rent a car because driving through the Keys, I wish I got to see it because I hear it's an incredible, incredible, like just experience going through. So in hindsight, Key West, I would have definitely rented a car. If I didn't plan on getting out of Key West, I would have at least tried to rent like a golf cart or something. San Francisco would have never rented a car. Would have never rented a car. Not on my watch would I have rented a car. It's Healy. Like it is, my heart dropped every single time I was in a car. Every time I was in one of their cars, my heart sank a wee bit. Never would I have ever thought about renting a car. It was always gonna be ride share. Would have never even fathomed it. Um, and then LA, um, the question that I got specifically was, you know, surrounding LA. I would have, it's 50-50. LA was a very drivable city. Nothing wrong with the roads, was very regular. I think the traffic is just something that I felt better that I'm stuck in traffic, but at least I can be in the backseat of my car, like doing something on Instagram, watching a TV show, like watching something while I sat in the same spot for like five minutes. It felt better that I wasn't actually driving. So uh, I think it's a, a city where, yeah, you can rent a car. It makes sense to rent a car. I don't see why you wouldn't, but I didn't mind not renting a car just because of the immense traffic and I do not like traffic. The one thing I also will say going towards getting a car, it's a lot more spread out than I thought LA was gonna be. Like that's the great thing about travel. Travel has opened me up to getting out of the TV screen and watching TV shows and seeing stuff on TV shows like watching Insecure and Insecure has been so based in LA but my mind has always been, oh, it's small, you know, everything's right here. Inglewood is right by Anaheim, which is right by Hollywood, which is right by like all of this stuff. And it's way more spread out. Like I thought I was gonna go to LA and I was gonna see Ram Stadium and then I was gonna see Inglewood and then I was gonna see Disneyland and I was gonna see all this stuff. It's more spread out. I think it wouldn't hurt. I did do the big bus tours in both San Francisco and LA. I'll say the big bus tour in San Francisco because it's so small of a city it expanded the whole city and you got to see every single district I think the LA since it's such a big again city it only kind of covered a finite area like a lot of Hollywood a good deal of Hollywood and it didn't really take you out as far and it took you to Santa Monica as well so if you want to go to the Santa Monica Pier it did have a light rail for that so the big bus tour um, this is just the app. I still keep the app. It go. it's a lot of cities. Um, and then you click explore and it shows you like a live map. So if you're in a city that has a big bus and big bus is, they have them a lot of places. I think that's a great way to, to transport yourself, transportation. Um, they have it in Budapest, Chicago, Dubai, Hong Kong, Las Vegas, Miami, Washington, DC, Rome. Like all of that, any city that I go to that has a big bus, I'm gonna do big bus because I do, I'm a history buff, which again makes me a nerd to travel with. And so that's why I prefer solo travel because I don't get to do, I'm not a turn up, drink, drink, drink person. I do drink at restaurants. You've seen me do that at things. If I go to a city, I did, you know, turn up and have fun in LA. I love that because I had a friend there, but most of the time, it's about the experience, getting to see the city again, taking myself out of this television screen and seeing all in the first episode of Insecure. They go through the Golden Gate Bridge and she went to school at Stanford, which is you know right outside of San Francisco. So it's very San Francisco heavy, the very first episode. And I'm watching it like, I was just there. I always hear that the Pacific Ocean is colder than the Atlantic Ocean, but I always took people's word for it and was like, I've never been to the West Coast. So don't know, don't know the Pacific Ocean, but to dip my toe in the Pacific and be like, oh, it is chilly willy over here, a little cold over here. Um, it was great. Another positive benefit of solo travel is I feel like you get to see so much more in a shorter period of time. Like again, you don't have to take off this, this whole week like you might would need to do to explore a city if you had friends who might wake up late or might go to bed early. Like they have certain things. I feel like I've gone on my trip and I've only needed but a few amount of days because I get up early, I'm in the room back by the time the sun is going down and I've 
I've seen so much. So overall, those are the questions I typically get. Please leave more down below because I am happy to answer any more questions that you guys have. But if you enjoyed this video for what it was and you got all the answers you needed, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Even if you have more, still give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know that I need to make more of these videos. Also comment down below. I'm gonna do the same thing I did last year. This year, I'm gonna go three solo trips, um, probably the same time frame, June, July, probably August this year kind of have an idea of where I want to go but I think a second opinion always helps so comment down below places where maybe I should add to the list of places that I need to solo see make sure that you guys are subscribed to my channel so you can continue to see my content and make sure that you're following me on Instagram at leolevon89 so you can keep up with my shenanigans in real time and I'll see you in my next video thank you so much for watching bye your friends they tell you say I think nobody Thank you.